and uh, thank you very much for this invitation to to feel that I'm virtually in Bangkok. I, I'm, I'm undergoing uh, Tom Yam withdrawal uh, problems. Uh, you know, a year without Tom Yam is is, is really uh, something uh, that's suffering. Uh, the other thing I'd like to thank you for uh, is for putting me second after uh, Ishaharis Sensei, because some of what I will say um, will uh, echo, in fact, uh, what has just been uh, suggested. Um, okay, um, you, the, the title may intrigue you, but it'll, uh, it'll become clearer as I go on. Um, the the work I'm presenting, in fact, is part of a, a, a project involving uh, at least eight of us in Paris, but it's a, a joint project with GIGA, the German Institute of Global Affairs, and we've created an observatory of the Indo-Pacific. I've asked the organizers to send you, uh, after the session, the flyer, uh, which um, tells you about our activities. We've had four webinars uh, so far, dealing with India, Australia, Japan, and last Wednesday, the United States. And we shall continue after September looking at the other players in the Indo-Pacific. So our purpose is to try and feed into uh, European policies on the Indo-Pacific by having the voices from the Indo-Pacific heard. And one of the first things we did, uh, even before we began the project, was a mapping exercise with the cartography service in my institution, in which we tried to represent visually different visions of the Indo-Pacific. And we described them in three ways, projective, mixed, and integrative. Um, and you will see that um, we've put France uh, in, the, in the integrative vision and that could, uh, the mixed vision rather, and that could be said for most of Europe. Well, the first thing I, I uh, need to indicate, of course, is to demand some intellectual property rights because the Indo-Pacific is a European concept. Okay, you guys in Asia think you invented it. Sorry, sorry, uh, the Indo-Pacific, uh, sorry for the typo, um, can in some ways be seen as a European invention. In a very interesting recent es essay by uh, an Indian scholar in New Zealand, uh, uh, Professor Padesai, uh, she argues, or he argues that, um, the Indo-Pacific can be seen as existing as a geo-economic entity since the high age of, British, of European imperialism, especially British imperialism, uh, and the great divergence between the West and the rest, basically from about 1820, 1830, 1840, uh, when uh, China is no longer the world's number one economy for a century or so, uh, but uh, and if you actually think about that period of, you know, of where uh, India was the jewel in the crown, so to speak, of the British Empire and extended to Hong Kong, you have in, in a sense uh, the, the map of the Indo-Pacific uh, that we see today, even if the term Indo-Pacific wasn't used at that time. Um, the other way in which it's a European concept as a, as a geopolitical term, uh, it was first articulated by the founder of modern geopolitical theory, General Karl Hosshofer, uh, in his 1924 opus, uh, Geopolitics of the P P Pacific Ocean, uh, studies on the relationship between geography and history. Um, Professor uh, General Hosshofer, unfortunately, then became seen as providing the, um, the intellectual underpinnings for the Nazi policy, uh, for, for Nazi, German Nazi geopolitics, and this notion of, of living room, Libesram, and, and expansionism. Um, and uh, he was associated with, with that. Um, he ended, he, he suicided tragically in 1946, after his son was executed for participating in the putsch against Hitler uh, towards the end of the Second World War. So the Indo-Pacific is a, to some extent, a European uh, idea. Um, and there's a photo from my collection of, of from Burma uh, is, is partly not just meant to be amusing, but also to point out that if we look actually 
uh, at the, that map, then, then in a sense, Burma is the fulcrum, uh, so to speak, of that Indo-Pacific. Uh, it's, the, it's the kind of the center between the Indo and the Pacific, or the Indo and the Chinese rather. Uh, and again, Indochina is another of those European terms. Um, so uh, who are now pushing for this notion of Indo-Pacific in Europe today? Well, I say, I would argue that the Indo-Pacific has two main recruiters uh, in, in Europe. One is uh, President Xi Jinping, uh, the leader of China, and the other today is President Joe Biden, the President of the United States. So why has is, why is a, a notion of the Indo-Pacific in you know, the last few years, um, culminating in the publication just several months ago in April by the European Commission of its strategy on the Indo-Pacific. Why has that occurred now? Well, I think if we look back a little bit, it all begins with the global Europe strategy of 2006, uh, where Europe says, okay, we're going to stop simply relying on the multilateral system, trading system. We're now going to sign a free trade agreements uh, with countries in, in Asia, particularly priority is given to Asia. So for free trade agreement, first of all, signed with South Korea, that set the, then set the model for a similar agreement signed with Japan, uh, more recently an agreement with uh, Singapore and, and with Vietnam. So um, Europe becoming a, in a sense, a market power. And again, uh, reflecting or uh, echoing what uh, Professor Ishihara has just said, that the tension in Europe is a little bit similar to Japan. Is, is Europe a market power or is, is it a normative power? Is it a power that tries to project the values and norms? Um, and I'll come back to that a little bit later. Um, so a sense, the other part of the context is China is increasingly seen as a systemic rival, uh, a country with which, which one can cooperate, but also which ultimately is, is a rival and is a kind of an adversary. Um, how does Europe fit into the context of Sino-American rivalry? Huh? Uh, and uh, Chinese assertiveness in Europe and this is why that say that Xi Jinping is the great recruiter has called into question the benevolent nature of China's peaceful, harmonious rise. Uh, and this became clear in the non ratification of the EU China Comprehensive Agreement on Investment, which is blocked in the European Parliament. Uh, again, over questions of Hong Kong and the Uyghur uh, and, uh, and the opposition in civil society uh, in, uh, for this ratification. The other context is, oof, the, the election of Joe Biden. You know, Europe suffered uh, during the period of the Trump administration, uh, who made no effort to, to try and build alliances. The Biden administration is, is really quite the opposite. It's given its priority to rebuilding the transatlantic alliance. Um, and at the same time, the period of the Trump administration also saw Europe trying to promote the notion of its strategic autonomy. So the, the, the European dilemma is therefore to these two notions of European power, normative power, or Europe as a market power. Um, so uh, which Europeans are we talking about? I hypothetically would suggest there are six groups of Europeans. Um, this, I say it's a hypothesis because I haven't done the research to, to flesh this out and to, in fact, uh, prove that there are six groups. But for, for the purposes of this seminar, let's assume that there are these six groups. Uh, the first is an exception, a, a resident middle power, uh, France. And France, of course, is the only European country which is physically present in the, uh, the Indo-Pacific area uh, with uh, overseas territories in both the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. Um, it has the world's second largest uh, exclusive economic zone. We often forget that, but it's the world's second largest uh, e exclusive economic zone, greater than that of the United, I think of the United States. No, protect after the United States. Um, and, uh, 
and France has the most direct and comprehensive presence in the region, including uh, with a significant number of French people uh, in countries in uh, the Indo-Pacific. Um, so um, you can see that the, the French contours of the Indo-Pacific begin in Paris. And of course, you know, we all know that Paris is the center of the world, don't we? Uh, and it extends to, uh, to, to, to the South Pacific, uh, uh, to Polynesia. And so is this arc, in fact, this map needs to be revised uh, and we can include it uh, here. And part of the French uh, presence in the Indo-Pacific is a series of trilateral agreements. We now talk about a Paris, Delhi, Canberra access uh, with uh, joint military exercises, uh, significant purchases by both Australia and France of weaponry uh, from, from, from France. So that is, that is the French exception. Um, the second group I would talk about is uh, mercantile powers with announced strategies, Germany and the Netherlands are the two other countries after France that published the ter their Indo-Pacific strategies. But there are other countries like Italy and Spain, uh, which are ex major exporting countries uh, that, uh, or at least middle power, middle exporting countries, which have established Asian policies. Um, and then there's a third group who I would call the engaged followers of an EU approach. What one, one needs to understand is in Europe, we have you know, a number of small countries that really do have an Indo-Pacific policy, you know, um, uh, and there, when we talk about the Indo-Pacific policy, they would say, oh, our Indo-Pacific Indo policy is that of the European Union. So they're the engaged followers, um, the other Scandinavian countries, Austria, Belgium, the Czech Republic, Luxembourg, Portugal. Uh, and here we can see the importance of the diaspora. For example, it's often not known that the Czech Republic, Czechia, has the largest uh, Vietnamese diaspora, population of Viet Cue in the world, in proportion, of course, to its population. And, and having gone to Brussels to a number of sessions on the EU Vietnam FTA, um, I noticed that uh, the, the importance of that diaspora in, in making sure that Southeast Asia at least was on the, uh, on the radar screen uh, in the Czech Republic. And, and then there are the different followers. I mean, you're in, imagine you're in Estonia or Latvia, you've got the Russian bear next door, uh, you know, saber rattling constantly. Well, you know, the Indo-Pacific is a long, long way away. Um, I'm trying to organize a, a seminar uh, in September during the Slovakian uh, presidency of the European Union. And when I wrote to my colleagues in Ljubljana, they replied to me, well, you know, we really don't know. Well, we're not all necessarily that interested. And we don't necessarily have the competence to be able to talk about the Indo-Pacific. Um, there's also another group of countries um, that are re-evaluating their relationship with China. Uh, they were seen as being, uh, in, in, a, in a way, a, a port of, a door of entry of, for, the European, for, for China into Europe, and that is being re-evaluated, um, despite the, the, uh, the COVID diplomacy of China in the, those countries. Um, and uh, there, then there's a final exception, of course, which is a non-EU uh, European country, which is uh, Britain. But I'll come to Britain in a moment. So how can we say the general European approach? Well, as you look at the, the seminal document, which is the European Strategy of Cooperation in the Indo-Pacific, published on the 19th of April, it talks about partnering uh, enhanced cooperation. It talks about being inclusive. Again, as in Japan, this is a problem. Are we trying to contain China? No, we're trying to include China. Well, that's what's said publicly. In private, it's not quite that. There is this notion also, I think, of uh, uh, containment. Um, there are no declared adversaries, but, 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 uh, you know, uh, China is, uh, so, 
uh, China, uh, there's an elephant in the China shop or the China in the elephant shop, uh, which is China. Uh, an emphasis on soft issues like climate change. Importance of, of maritime security. Um, uh, uh, it's building on the 2018 strategy for connecting Europe and Asia. Uh, assertiveness on trade, uh, greater ambitions of FTAs. Uh, transnational security issues are under, undermine, uh, underlined like cybercrime. And there are normative concerns, again, like in Japan, promoting democracy, human rights, and the rule of law. Um, and I would also add a 10th um, aspect, which is to repackage, to give coherence. You know, Europeans like things to be neatly sort of organized. Uh, and there are, there are all these things that exist out there, the EU ASEAN Strategic Partnership, the FTAs, uh, uh, the agreements with India, EU, Japan, and uh, et cetera. So to package that as part of the Indo-Pacific is, uh, is very convenient conceptually from a European point of view. Of course, Europeans feel there is one thing that they can do, which the United States and China cannot do, which is inter-regionalism inter-regional dialogues between the European Union, for example, and the countries of ASEAN. Um, uh, so David, uh, I know there is a 28 country in Europe, so it's very difficult to, uh, uh, to speak about I'm that for 15 minutes, but uh, normally your time is over, so can you just uh, uh, okay. resume? Thank you. Uh, can you just a couple of statistics? Yes. Uh, Southeast, for Southeast Asian Europe is seen as the preferred third party uh, to hedge against US-China rivalry. Uh, Europe is a, 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 an arms supplier. Um, uh, there's a maritime dimension. You see the importance of trade for countries in Europe. Uh, you see the French naval presence. I won't daily on that. Uh, the European, the British exception, the tilt to the Indo-Pacific, to use the title of the, the latest strategic document. Um, uh, for Britain, there's a need to find new uh, trading partners after Brexit, the, the, for my view, the tragedy of Brexit, the stupidity of Brexit, actually, uh, to piggyback on existing FTAs uh, and the intention to negotiate to join the CPTPP. But there are also subjective factors for Britain. Uh, there's a, a degree, in my view, of imperial nostalgia. Um, for, for Britain, uh, the Indo-Pacific or Asia is, is firstly the Indian subcontinent. Look at the number of very effective uh, ministers in the British government of Indian origin. Uh, and part of the, I think, the factors in Brexit is that the Indian community or the Indo-Pakistani community in Britain actually voted for Brexit. And there's a degree of, of nostalgia there. Recreating the ang Anglosphere, this meeting here uh, with uh, the, the Australians. Um, and, and, and a military dimension showing that Britain is back uh, as a power sending uh, the uh, carrier fleet. Oh, my conclusions then, well, sorry, it's a bit of a cop out. Um, it's too early to evaluate. Uh, so that's always, the, you know, more research is required. Uh, let's observe, wait and see. Um, so what are the factors that are going to determine the trajectory, domestic developments in Europe, huh? greater protectionism, the, the animosity towards China? I mean, I'm surprised that 20 years of Chinese diplomacy is being wasted uh, through the aggressive and assertive actions of the People's Republic of China uh, in the South China Sea, but in other ways in Europe. Where the Sino-American rivalry goes, where transatlantic relations go, where the, the what happens with Sino-Indian uh, competition, huh? and uh, uh, and the way that Southeast Asian countries see Europe as providing a kind of third alternative or fourth alternative with Japan and South Korea uh, in their hedging strategies uh, in the context of the Sino-American rivalry. Sorry, I'm sorry for abusing my time. I'll, I'll stop there, but I have to deal with 28 countries, so it is a bit of a challenge. Thank you. So thank you uh, so much, David, for your presentation. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to say that we are very happy uh, to welcome you uh, as a representative of the Observatoire de l'Indo-Pacifique in our project to develop a network on the topics. It's really important for us. And thank you so for your um, um, 
for your presentation, which highlights the, the geneal European genealogy of the term and the challenge to present uh, uh, so many countries uh, from Europe uh, in this uh, uh, 15 minutes, a bit more. 